Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise has fast become one of horror's most striking villains, with his droopy lip, wall-eyed look, and iconic red and white makeup, joining the rogues gallery of horror icons such as Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. But there are some fascinating and terrifying early designs for the evil clown that didn't make the final cut. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing nine horrifying cancelled Pennywise designs and transformations you never got to see in IT chapters 1 and 2. And if you'd like a chance to win an awesome Pennywise fun Funko Pop, be sure to subscribe and keep watching for more details. Before arriving at the final look for Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, director Andy Muschietti made a sketch in 2015 of what he thought the murderous clown should look like. That sketch formed the basis for a set of concept art by Daniel Carrasco. And although some of the features of these early designs, such as Pennywise's red and white makeup, were kept, other parts were scrapped, and instead Muschietti opted to give the villain some more pronounced, baby-faced features, such as big eyes and apple cheeks, as he felt the contrast of the character's childlike features and his terrifying behaviour would make him all the more disturbing. Although these early designs are very cool, a young child would have likely run a mile as soon as they set eyes on such a clown. Skarsgård's Pennywise, with his cherub-like cheeks, thick lips and more carefully manicured hair, is less immediately haunting in its appearance, which is part of what helps it lure children into its gruesome traps. Watching Pennywise transform into a giant spider clown was pretty awesome in Chapter 2, and the final design was a vast improvement on the spider form that it took on at the end of the 90s miniseries, though obviously there's a difference in budget between the TV show and films, and the technology's advanced massively since then. Still, part of the terrifying realism of the spider clown comes from the fact that Bill Skarsgård filmed these scenes in a motion capture suit so that the CGI monster retained many of the actor's facial features. And although it was pretty freaky seeing Pennywise's head and torso attached to giant sharpened spider legs, early concept art revealed in the World of It book shows a different design that also gave the hybrid monster some disturbingly long human-like arms that had fingers not just on the hands, but running all the way up the arm, giving it a kind of caterpillar-style look. In this design, it seems like It was grabbing either Richie or Eddie, in a similar way the It spider did to Eddie in the TV series. We've seen Pennywise transform himself into some pretty gross beings to terrorise the losers such as the rotting diseased leper that attacked Eddie outside the Kneebolt house. However, an unused design for the spider clown gave Pennywise a rather vicious set of teeth on his derriere, in what the concept design of Vincent Prose called the Pennywise arse mouth. The way this worked is that the upper parts of each of Pennywise's main four spider legs had hidden jaws with grinding teeth that when put together formed what was effectively a lethal mouth in the creature's butt. Then when Pennywise trapped a victim below him, the jaws would open up to attack. Just imagine if we'd seen that in the final film, it would probably have spawned a whole series of memes to rival even Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Watching the once powerful spider clown Pennywise shrink into a melted baby version of himself during his death scene was quite a sight to behold, and reminded me in some ways of an infant Benjamin Button. But before the filmmakers arrived at that final look for Pennywise during his last moments on Earth, they toyed with other options, including a many-eyed version of the shrunken baby clown. Yes, after the losers had beaten down the evil clown with the power of belief and insults, there was almost going to be a version where we would have seen Baby Pennywise's still oversized head covered in a grotesque mass of eyes. The inspiration behind all those eyes on the spider clown could be the fact that real-life spiders have multiple eyes. Or perhaps it's a nod to the various many-eyed beings in mythology and literature. Either way, a multi-eyed and shriveled Pennywise would certainly have been the kind of freaky, disgusting creature you wouldn't have been able to stop looking at. And it might have been even creepier if those eyes also had Pennywise's signature creepy wall-eyed look, shifting some of them in opposite directions to the others. There's also some more concept art in the World of It book, of regular Pennywise with extra eyes in his forehead and also running along the sides of his jaws when he opens them to reveal the deadlights. And that too is truly the stuff of nightmares. Another very creepy, unused design for the final Pennywise spider had the clown's head wedged in the stomach of a big body. Above the clown's head was a disturbing skull with outstretched arms. Then rather than well-defined spider legs, this monster had a mass of tentacle-like appendages below. And there's another surreal creature designed with tentacles as well as claws, which give it the feel of some kind of gross underwater hybrid monster. And one of the tentacles even has teeth and eyes on it. 
There's something of a baby-like quality to these designs as well, which makes me think of the awesomely horrific baby bug creature that emerges from one of the fortune cookies to terrify the losers at the Chinese restaurant, and is a reminder to them that they've never been able to have babies themselves, and have to retain childlike beliefs in order to defeat it once and for all. Another set of unused Pennywise spider designs seem to tip their hat to the spider version of it from the TV miniseries. The body's thicker on these designs than the final version in the film, and this particular shot of the spider raised up on its legs exposing its abdomen reminds me of how the TV spider revealed the deadlights to the losers in the final showdown. That was also the monster's weak spot and the place where the losers pulled out its beating heart to defeat the evil entity in the miniseries. A weirdly mesmerising transformation for Pennywise that Andy Muschietti wanted to include was called the Concentric Nightmare. In the World of It book, Muschietti describes this unsettling look as like a sock being turned inside out. Accompanying the director's sketch of this Pennywise monster are additional faces and eyes that the monster's head would seem to transform into. According to Muschietti, the Concentric Nightmare did appear ever so briefly in Chapter 2, just after Eddie throws a spike Beverly gave him through Pennywise's mouth to stop it from deadlighting Richie. When the spike sticks in Pennywise's throat, a version of the concentric nightmare appears in a blink and you'll miss it moment before Pennywise falls back and is stabbed. It's likely this particular Pennywise design was virtually scrapped in the end because they wanted to go with more instantly recognisable versions of it that call back to previous incarnations of the character we'd seen throughout the movies. Also perhaps the concentric design was a little too complex to work effectively in the fast paced strobe lit finale. Mrs. Kirsch's transformation into the giant witch that terrorises Beverly back at her old home happens off screen, but in early concept art the plan was that Bev would see the old lady turn into the many-mouthed Pennywise monster in front of her eyes. Some of these early designs for the witch look even more terrifying than the one that ended up on screen, but I can see why they cut the character's transformation scene as it makes the witch's sudden appearance even more of a shock. There's an intriguing early human version of Pennywise that was actually filmed and shown in test screenings for Chapter 1. The scene wasn't included in either of the theatrical releases for Chapters 1 or 2, but we do have a glimpse of what looks like Pennywise's early human appearance in this photo. The scene, which was set in the 1600s, had Pennywise terrorising a mother into giving up her baby for him to eat, and is an early indicator of how it corrupted the inhabitants of Derry to turn a blind eye to his evil. The scene may actually show up in the six-hour supercut of both movies that Andy Muschietti is planning, and if you want to know all about that and the other deleted scenes from Chapter 2, tap here for my full deleted scenes video. There's also a link in the video description. By the way, if you'd like to see even more of the concept art and amazing behind-the-scenes details I discussed in this video, be sure to take a look at the World of It book. I've added links to that in the video description below. So would you like to have seen any of these unused Pennywise designs? Leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the Gleam link below for a chance to win an awesome Pennywise Funko Pop. The giveaway runs until the end of this month and the winner will be contacted via email. Tap left for another IT video or tap right for something else you're sure to like. If you enjoyed this then a like is hugely appreciated and why not unleash your inner movie lover with more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!